Architecturally, Venice is a mixture of styles still surviving from different eras. To see what really matters, Ruskin says, you need to go back before the Renaissance to the medieval Gothic. The Gothic is all about contrast and surprise, one texture against another, different forms accumulating and supporting each other. This is St Mark's Cathedral, full of Gothic features. And this is the Doge's Palace, even more Gothic. The Doge is the governor of the Republic of Venice. Medieval labourers who work for him believe their rulers are good, Ruskin says, and they believe in their own individuality, which is connected to nature. It's the labourer's individual creativity that's valued. He's not just knocking out something standard and uniform. The carver contributes to the good of the whole simply by expressing himself. The society is healthy. It's Ruskin's idea of good government reflecting his law of help. The craftsman feels part of nature. His feet are firmly on earth, while the towering Gothic structure he helps to build is a brother to the mountain that soars up to God. What you're seeing is inspired wonkiness. In a row of windows, a decorated arch pops up for no reason. The line of windows suddenly drops a level. The bricks change tone unpredictably. The pattern keeps changing rhythm. But nothing feels out of whack. It all writes itself. Like a plant, the building reaches fulfillment through all the different individual parts, cohering and cooperating. Ruskin thinks the Renaissance style that comes after the Gothic is only cold perfection, not based on trees and mountains, but on squares and circles. Symmetry is sterile. It's not about parts expressing nature, each in a different way, but a streamlined geometric whole that ignores nature. Where's the pleasure in sterile architecture? Where's the individuality? Where's the human soul? Here, the society is sick. The labourers working for Renaissance princes, glorifying themselves, are not artists creating, but automatons slaving. There's no shared vision of nature uniting the powerful and the poor. The labourer's spirit is deadened. Today's milling tourists by St Mark's Square don't realise that they're in the middle of a battle. It's being fought between two buildings facing each other across the square. On the right, the Renaissance-style library, designed in the 16th century. And on the left, the Doge's Palace, built in the 1300s. Every single one of the marble columns that you're looking at here has its own different individual, intensely done stone carving at the top of it. Throughout this whole building, the eye is getting correctness, but it's also being constantly entertained. Now look at the Renaissance-style library opposite, with its dignity but also its monochrome monotony, its regular, predictable repetition of shapes throughout, so that the eye knows exactly at the start what it's going to be seeing right through to the end. Between these two buildings, you're looking at a war of the worlds, medieval world versus Renaissance world. For Ruskin, it's life versus half-life. Ordinary people being spiritually fulfilled, the Doge's Palace. Ordinary people being nothing, just used creatures, the Renaissance style library. The Doge's Palace shows ordinary people interacting with the rulers to build a civilization. It shows medieval craftsmen's joy in their labor being imbued into the stones. The inner world is connected to nature. The Gothic style is the great reminder to people living in cities of the natural environment. Medieval craftsmen feed the language of nature into their carvings. Renaissance style buildings don't show any of that. They just show labourers following through a plan that's been handed down to them. Ordinary people living in Renaissance world live in an environment that isn't for them, that doesn't reflect nature, that doesn't express their inner feelings and that they don't understand. 
This goes against everything we've been brought up on. We think, ooh, Renaissance. You should hear Vivaldi whenever you see it. Ruskin says no, you should hear Doom. Ruskin's lesson about the past is a message about how to live now. One way is to be a crushed slave, like he saw in his own civilization, what had happened to him. And the other is to be alive to every moment of existence. Ruskin goes to the island of Torcello in the Venice Lagoon to see the church there, first built by Christians fleeing from Attila the Hun in the 7th century. Mosaics from the 11th century show the weighing of souls, the battle of good and evil, the solemn awareness that no one escapes judgment. The mosaics carry on visual traditions that are a thousand years old, organic, spontaneous pattern, man unified with nature. Ruskin contrasts all this with the Renaissance. And in that contrast, where anybody else might just see a style change, because after all, change does happen, he sees a great moral collapse from spiritual health to spiritual corruption. He sees the coming of his own time. It's the biblical revelation gradually dawning on him. Venice is Britain. The history of Venice is going to teach a lesson to Britain. An empire on the edge of the sea, immensely wealthy from its trade and conquests and proud of its traditions and heritage. That's Britain, the British Empire in the 19th century, unaware that it's rotting away from within and heading for a fall. For Venice, the fall was the Renaissance. For Britain, it's the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> 